another reason for the kipande system imposing taxes on the people in 1901 the government passed a hard tax regulation one rupee for every native hat in east africa you can pay it in two ways you can pay it with money or you can pay it through your labor hat tax or poll tax right was increased to five rupees in 1915 what else happened in 1915 the introduction of the kipande system in 1920 something else happened the hard tax was increased from right five rupees to eight rupees what else happened in 1920 the expansion of the kipande system under the ordinance tax what does that tell you you can extract as much as you want from the labor force through taxes through low wages, as long as you can control his movement, his ability to move within the economy, you know where he is, you know how much he's earning, you know everything that you need to know about him. His negotiating power is gone. So let's go to taxes to, again in Kenya today. The mobile money transfers was increased from 10% to 12%. The fuel tax to 8%. There is a National Housing Development Fund of 1% of the employee's basic salary. There is now a presumptive business tax of 15%. And what else is happening? An expansion of the identification system. There is nothing new under the sun. What happened before will happen again what happened under the colonialists it's happening now they want to extract but they know that people hide and run away from the system so they want to catch those people in the system make it impossible for them to run away put a goat's bell on their neck so Africans were not stupid they realized this Kipande system is here to oppress us. It is here for the benefit of the colonizers. And guess who led the fight against the Kipande system? His father, Jomo Kenyatta. He actually threatened to ban Kipandes in the CBD, Nairobi CBD. He said, let the system apply to all races or abolish and the government paid heed because in 1947 the colonizers were weak they had just fought a war the second world war and they couldn't fight every colony they had they gave in they abolished the kipande system in 1947 through the effort of jomo kenyatta instead they decided that they would issue identity cards to all the races. So wasn't the Kipande an identity card? What was it? Was it different from the identity card? Because now they have had abolished one thing, they're introducing another one for all the races. So they continued their ID. And today, the ID card and the number attached to that card is necessary to access almost every government service. You cannot file your taxes without it. You cannot enroll in a pension scheme or a social insurance scheme without it. You need it to register to vote. You also need it in the private sector as well. You cannot open a bank or a mobile money account without it. You cannot register a SIM card without it. You cannot transfer cash without it. You cannot get a job without it. That's an ID. It applies to all the races. But they abolished the funding system in 1947. 
but here's the funny thing they brought it back in 1952 and it resurfaced in one region in particular mount kenya and what were they doing they were fighting the state of emergency Jaden kimathi and the mau mau they were causing problems for the british and the british returned re brought back a system of control to locate these people who are trying to fight for their freedom fighting for kenya and they did that by enhancing the identification system by bringing back the kipande so clearly it wasn't going to benefit the mau mau and it wasn't for the benefit of kenya because it was to help the colonialists maintain their control over kenya but there are some people who benefit from it besides the colonialists the central office for the issue issuance of the kipande was kipande house you must have seen it it's at the corner of loita street and kenyatta avenue and a wealthy indian a businessman his name was gudit singh neya he built it in 1913 by 1915 the kipande system was here and it was in his building that guys were issued kipandes the name of the building at, at that time was neya building the kenya commercial bank purchased it in 1976 they purchased a national mon monument corruption started way back and today there are some people who are benefiting some people who are getting contracts from it 5 to 6 billion worth of contracts for this system <laughs> 